us off. I will. <clears throat> Sounds good. Hey, Coach. Uh, Kellyanne has a very important question. Uh, she's curious about uh, Sunday being senior day and what will that mean to you? Well, obviously, we've got a lot of incredible young women in our program and none more important than our seniors. And so just, you know, it's hard to kind of put into context what, you know, JC and Rebecca, uh, Ricky and uh, those kids have meant to our program. Uh, but really, I'm just kind of focused on trying to enjoy uh, the time that, that we, we get to coach them here from now to the end of the season. Um, but just incredible young women who have obviously left an indelible mark on this program. Thank you. Got it. Kevin, do you have uh, finalized plans yet or who is going to be participating next? I know Ricky and Madison both have another year if they want it. And you would discuss maybe Ebony getting another year as well that you were looking into. Yeah, um, I'm not, I don't actually know who will be participating Sunday yet. And my staff probably knows, but I don't think much past uh, today's practice and tomorrow or in, and in Thursday's game. So, <laughs> and, and, and with that game, um, obviously Penn State's in a little bit of a different spot than when you guys played uh, back in, I think it was December. Ashley Owusu's back and they've had some injuries. Kind of, you know, what are your thoughts heading into this matchup and kind of the keys you're focusing in on? Yeah, no, they, you know, really good team, obviously very talented. We had a, a hard fought game against them first time around where we had to go to overtime to win, um, but they're very talented. They've got as good as guard play as anybody in the league. And, um, you know, Wusu's playing now and, and she's playing great and, and they play particularly well at home. So this will be a very difficult challenge for us at, at Penn State. And they're on a five game losing streak right now. Um, with Tave Alliday going down for the rest of the season. Um, what have you noticed kind of looking at them, watching them, and maybe not not diagnosing as, you know, your own uh, coach and trying to improve them, but what's changed about them that's gone from Moose's back and they're playing so great to now kind of on the other end of that, and they're they're losing like double digits almost every night? Yeah, it's hard to say because they're really talented. I think they've got a great scheme, X and O-wise, and they're playing pretty hard. They just haven't played at the same level that they were certain parts of the season. So, you know, hopefully we can do our thing and, and kind of play well and, and kind of impact the game with, with the way we can. Um, but they're very dangerous. And like I said, they've played extremely well at times this year. And I know going into the game, a lot of the players for Penn State have been talking about this one, not just as facing Ohio State, but they're also playing at Rec Hall. They're playing at an arena they haven't played at. 28 some years uh, what what does that kind of uh, boost for a team because I know Ohio State you've all played at St. John's before what what does that do for the players in those games it, especially now facing number two team yeah I think it's you know for them it's probably pretty cool experience uh, it's gonna be much more intimate than the Bryce Jordan Center and, and I, I'm sure they'll have a wonderful crowd and it'll be a tough environment throughout the playing hi coach speaking of um, arenas and playing in environments Third time this season, you guys are opening up the the upper um uh, the upper bowl of the shock. So, what does that mean to you? The seeing the growth that in the fan base that this team has had, even just throughout the season and since you've started here. Yeah, no, it's really awesome to see, and I'm just very appreciative of our fans and the you know the the community um, here in Columbus to get behind our team and support us like they've been doing. Have you had any personal interaction with these fans, like these new fans who've been coming out? No, not really. I do want to ask, too, about the state of the Big Ten. The Big Ten, it just seems like no one's safe, if I'm going to put it like that. No one's safe. Can you just describe your thoughts on how this conference looks compared to past seasons playing in Big Ten? Yeah, it's just really deep. There's no easy nights. I mean, every, everybody's there, – there's a lot of great coaches. Um, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of, like, older talent. And we have, you know, a lot of fifth-year players and so forth. So – everybody's got a really good team and it's just, it's a real grind for lack of a better term. And, and um, you know, you, you got to just really do everything you can to have great practices, great preparation heading into any game or else you'll get God out there. I know you talked about like the, a little while ago, you guys would have won some of the games. I, I, I kind of did the math. It seems like you're talking about that Michigan game being the turning point in the season and everything being when I know that's when Cody started practicing better too and everything. So 
now coming up on a stretch where you're seeing teams you've seen already and specifically in Michigan soon, what is it like if you could just describe the turnaround your team has done since that period? Yeah, you know, we just we we've we've continued even like we didn't play as well as I thought we could early in the season. Uh, we continued to practice pretty well. So I think we've gotten just a lot better because of our practice habits. And then within that, obviously, Cody's gotten back to being who he's capable of being. Celeste has gotten more comfortable. And so we've gotten better, but we've also had, you know, a couple key players really um, improve and up their game. And I think that's had a, a significant impact. For sure. can, you, can you talk about Cody in practice now and like how she, just the focus she has in the end of the season? Yeah, no, she's she's really locked in. She's, she's practicing really hard and with great intensity and focus and um you know, and she always practices hard, uh, but I think just her intensity and her focus are uh, in a, in a little bit better place, and it's really carrying over to the court. And last thing uh, I want to ask – oh, sorry. You're good. No, and the last thing I want to ask is you're facing teams you've already faced already. So do you feel like that gives you, an, a, if you look at it, like an advantage, or do you feel like also they know what to expect from you? How do you view those type of games? I think I think both. You know, we've since we played them, you know, they're going to look at the film first time around and see what we did well and, and see how they can kind of stop that. And we're going to do the same thing. So it's probably a wash. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think it, it is good to have played some of these teams. You got a little more information on them. Thank you. Yep. G, did you have anything? Yeah, just one question, uh, Kevin. I know you talked about the guard play of Penn State already, but uh, coming up on Maryland, also you got Chan Sellers, who's one of the best guards in the Big Ten. How do you expect yeah. – you played so many great guards already this season. How does she compare to some of the other uh, backcourts you played, and how, how are you preparing for that matchup? Uh, no, she's very, very talented, one of the best players – in the league and certainly one of the best perimeter players. And it'll be, a, it'll be a big matchup. I mean, I'm hoping our full court press can maybe wear on her a little bit um, because she's very special. She's from Ohio. She's going to want to come home and play really well. And just another thing to that. Um, I know we talked a lot about the season, like past few times about how kind of in the third quarter, it's third quarter has been like the Ohio state quarter, so to say. And uh, you guys have really come out more with the press then as opposed to more in the first half. Is there a reason for that, or do you, are you guys looking to play a full four quarters like you've talked about in the past? Yeah, no, we're, we're looking to play more towards four quarters, but it just seems like that we come out of the locker room with the energy that we need in the press, and it's been effective. So hopefully we can get a little more of that in the first half as well. Matt, did you have anything? Kevin, you had, um, you had mentioned the number of fifth-year seniors you guys had and really across the Big Ten. How different from a coaching perspective and just kind of leading the program, how much of a difference is there now in program and roster management as you're dealing with that just it seems like almost a backlog at this point of those fifth-year players that are still in the program now and ready to see leave? Yeah, no, it's, it's um, roster management. It for sure. I mean, because you, you had COVID in the fifth years and then the portal, you can go anytime you want, and be eligible. So, you know, roster management is is here today. It's going to be a thing and it's going to be a thing forever. And so, you know, you, most days you're coaching and nowadays you get to the end of the year and you got to put your GM hat on and build the roster or keep it or whatever. Recruit it, however you want to put it. <laughs> Kind of jumping off that, um, if you had to grade your roster management, how would you, especially looking at where you are at this point in the season, how would you grade it? Yeah, I like our roster. I think we have the right kids in the program. They play well together. They they, they have cohesion. And, and that's part of it, too, because you add people and, you know, you might not exactly know who you're getting. But I think we I think we had the right people come into the program the last couple of years. And, and I like where our roster's at right now. On that cohesion, Celeste Taylor and J.C. Sheldon both referenced how the team is coming closer together to kind of block out the noise of the number two ranking and, you know, title chances and all that. What is this team doing differently this year that you've noticed as a coach that maybe past teams like last year you were number two also? What's different this year with how they're acting? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, we've added Celeste and, and Ty, and I think they've quickly kind of ingrained themselves with the team, which has been really good. And um, 
but I, I think it's similar stuff. You know, we're getting good leadership out of JC and Madison and Ricky and Celeste now. And, and so I think it, it's that part is similar. Um, and uh, so, anyways, like I said, I, I tell them all the time, it's my job to make sure we practice the right way. We, we focus on the right things and, and, and we, I, I set the right tone and it's their job to, to be really good in the locker room and in the hotels and on the scene planes. And I think they're doing their part. Thank you. Everybody good? All right. Thanks, everybody. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody, Thanks for soon. joining. We appreciate it.